That's yeah, okay. uh, thanks for having me, and it's I'm very happy to be here to to um, give a talk about uh, my recent work about the fast base limit of ADA safety. Um, so um, this presentation is going to be several parts. First, I'm gonna um, give a brief review about the backgrounds. And then I'm gonna uh, review a little bit about the existing frameworks of the flat space limit of ADSFT. And then I'm gonna introduce how um, they, how we can actually unify those different frameworks. Um, and then, yeah, I probably will skip the, the part four, but let's see, yeah. Um, and then I'm gonna uh, summary and, and give some about our looks. Um, so, so we all know about ADSFT. It basically states that the physics in ADSD plus one dimensions is quite if it, it, it's actually equivalent to conformal field theory living on the ADS boundary. Um, so th this this figure is pretty nice. I like it. It's uh, we can think of the ADS as a cylinder, and the CFT lives on the boundary, and uh, quantitatively. Um, it's about the statement of equivalence between partition function of ADS and CFT. And so, um, perturbatively, we can actually think of this uh, correspondence as a sort of uh, a dictionary between the amplitudes defined in ADS and the coordination function defined in uh, conformal field theory sites. And the ADS amplitude can be actually computed perturbatively in terms of a Newton constant. So we kind of assume we are doing some, uh, we can couple uh, gravity theory in ADS. And the safety coordinator, on the other hand, is actually um, strongly coupled and can be equivalent, equivalently or organized in terms of a large N expansion. So we can think of this dictionary in, ter in terms of the, this this plot here. So in ADS, we, we draw our written diagrams. So we have a free theory, which is basically one of n up to zero order, and we have a tree level exchange, and we have loop effects, and so on and so on. And uh, I like to uh, review a bit about a very nice tool of writing in this amplitude, that is the Manon amplitude. It turns out that the Manon space is pretty efficient and very lateral to write as the amplitude and safety coordinators as as proposed by Mac and, and John Panadons like like 10 years ago. So this is a representation for safety coordinators or, or ADS amplitude using the Manon representation. This M is a Manon representation, and this delta IJ is called the Manon variable, and we have to integrate against a, um, a prefactor over the Manon variable. And the, and the integration and the integral control looks like this. So we basically, in this integral, we integrate this Manon variable along the imaginary axis, axis and uh, we can actually but if, if we want to perform the, the integral and go back to the usual space of amplitude or coordination function, we can actually deform the contour for this integral to pick up all possible poles, uh, all physical poles, and we can actually reproduce the, the, the position space. So why it, it's good to use Manon space? Um, here's a pretty trivial example is a contact interaction. I mean, it's trivial uh, in Manon space, but it's actually pretty complicated in, in coordinate space. I mean, in coordinate space, this, this contact interaction uh, is written as a D function, which is actually pretty uh, still complicated. But in Manon space, it, it, it's just the same as we write the contact interaction in flat space. For, for quantum field theory, it's just proportional to the um, the 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 Wilson coefficient or the coupling the coupling constant. I mean, but in coordinate space, we can see that this contact diagram is written in terms of a bunch of 
a modification of a, of a, of the bulk to boundary propagator, and we have to integrate over the bulk point. So it's actually pretty complicated. And here's a more on trivial example: is the graviton exchange in for a massless scanner case in, in ADS5. And uh, it's really in terms of the manner space, it's actually pretty simple. And uh, you can you can actually see if we take the flat space limit that that is if we if we scale the man variable to be very large, this amplitude actually is the same as the flat space graviton exchange um, amplitude. So um, let me move to the embedded space and conformal block. The embedding space of conformal field theory actually was first introduced by Dirac, but later, um, later uh, developed by uh, Kostka, Pandos, Pole, and Richkov, like still 10 years, uh, no, 10 years ago. And th this is basically the figure. The idea is that we actually embed the, the, the space of CFT into two dimensional, high, two higher dimensional space, such that we can realize the conformal symmetry, like it's, it's a, like a linear symmetry in two dimensional higher space. Um, it's just the, the Lorenzo symmetry. So, uh, we can actually uh, introduce the embedding coordinates, and this X is the usual coordinate in CFT, and this P is the embedding co coordinate in the embedding space. And it has to satisfy the non constraint, and it has to be uh, in, has to be homogeneous in in the coordinate. And safety coordinator can be decomposed into the conformal blocks. That's if we have a safety coordinator, so we can we can write it in terms of a sum over a bunch of conformal blocks weighted by the LP coefficients. And uh, if we, I mean, around the mean field theory, um, this the 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 O here that is uh, exchange operator in the conformal block decomposition should be the double twist operators. Um, so. We can actually write the the O the uh, the operator as a double twist family like this, and its its dimension it's the sum of two external dimensions plus span plus two n where n is integer plus a anomalous dimension, and this anomalous dimension can be um, can be interpreted as a in internal energy in the ADS bulk caused by the interaction. And um, if we take the flat space limit of the CFT, we should be able to extract the QFT amplitude from CFT coordinators because, I mean, in the ADS CFT, we have a correspondence between ADS amplitude and the safety coordinators. And if we take the flat space limit of ADS, of ADS, we should be able to get Q QFT amplitude from ADS amplitude and thus we can get a map between safety amplitude and the safety coordinators. This is a basic idea. And, uh, okay, let me try to review frameworks of flat space limit. So the mass in the flat space limit is, looks like this. So we have a conformal dimension and uh, we have an ADS radius. The conformal dimension over ADS radius at the large ADS radius should be proportional to the mass. So that means if we consider the finite conformal dimension, um, then uh, we actually consider the massless particles in the flat space. But if we consider a very large conformal uh, dimension in as large as a large ADS radius, um, we, we then uh, we we can then um, describe the mass of particles in the flat space limit, where the mass is given by the ratio. And there are actually different frameworks describing the flat space limit in the usual kinematics. By usual kinematics, I mean, we actually consider the spin is much, much less than the ADS radius. We have different frameworks in the literature, but, but the massless case and massive case is actually sharply different. So the, the, this figure shows the existing frameworks for flat space limit. The massive case and massive case is pretty different. And besides that, we actually have a, have a bunch of different frameworks. We have a momentum space, 
Although only Master's Kiss exists, uh, to my knowledge, and we have a Man in Space description, we have Partial Wave description, and we have a Code Lake description. And the, the relationship between them is actually um, on low end before. So I'm actually going to just review a bit about all those frameworks. This uh, momentum framework, it's, it says that if we look at the momentum space of safety grenaders, it actually just corresponds to the uh, the flash space amplitude with the, with the dictionary of uh, momentum. And where this uh, momentum space of uh, operator is spacing just a Fourier transform of a, of a position space. And the man in space uh, is already, I mean, different for massless and massive case. For massless case, we have this formula. So we basically have a, have a, a man in amplitude and we integrate it over some pr additional parameter alpha. But uh, for massive case, it's pretty strange that we don't need to do any integral. We just need to map the flat space amplitude to the Manning amplitude by, by, by replacing the Manning variables. And the coordinate space, it's also different for massless and massive case. So for massless case, it's also phrased as a bulk point limit. That is, if we have a four particles at the boundary and we, 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 we scatter them into the bulk, and if the x1 and x2 are located at Lorenzo time minus pi over two, and x3 and x4 are Lorenzo time pi over two, the particles are actually focused on the, on the locally on the bulk point P. So that locally, it looks like the flat space amplitude. And it is given by smearing over the scattering energy. This T is a flat space amplitude, and we have to integrate it against some curl over the scattering energy. And also, though, this formula action develops a bulk point singularity, uh, cycles to zero. And for massive case, it was conjectured years ago by Komatsu, Ponas, and, and collaborators. I basically says we can map the embedding space to the momentum space in flat space, and we can then map the gradation function to the amplitude. And if we have coordinates on the flat space limit, we can actually use the rotation symmetry to do the partial wave expansion that can give us the, 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 the partial wave frameworks. And this is the partial wave frameworks. For massless case, we still have a bulk point limit, and this is a this is a formula where this this thing is the phase shift in the in the flat space limit, and here is the safety data. And for massive case, we we have to sum over a window of spectrum, so it's still it's still different. So our motivation is to expand the origin of the momentum space framework and matter space framework and so on. And we have and we want to explain why massless and massive case look so different and how to unify them. And uh, we can kind of generally derive the unified man in space, which can be transformed into coordinate and partial wave frameworks. So this is our uh, unification scheme. So if we start with the Ponko ADS, we can derive the momentum space flat space, uh, space limit. If we start with the global ADS, we can we can go to man in space, partial wave, and coordinate frameworks. And the point point LS and global LS can be actually related by the subregion duality. So the idea is to use the bulk reconstruction. That that means the bulk can be actually reconstructed by smearing <laughs> over the boundary uh, at, uh, using the HKLL formula. This is a bulk field and this is a boundary um, operator and we have a curl and we can reconstruct this field, uh, bulk field in terms of a boundary operator. And the flat space limit, and the idea is that we actually, we can actually take the, if we have the re reconstruction formula, the HKLL formula, we can actually take the flat space limit of the reconstruction and then we can obtain we call the scattering smearing kernel. Like if we start with the Ponko ADS reconstruction, we, we we get the momentum space from framework that is looks like this. 
So this is basically the, the momentum space because we have a Fourier transform. And if we uh, start with the global ADS reconstruction and we take the fast space limit, we can actually um, obtain the Manning space framework and coordinate space framework and partial waves partial wave framework. And this is the 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 smearing formula um, by taking the flat space limit of global ADS reconstruction. And let's just focus on the global smearing. That um, the question is how to get the massless and massive formula unified. The idea is that what actually why we get the why we get the flat space limit formula. The idea is that if we take ADS radius to be very large and the and there, the 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 smearing action picks up saddle points. I mean, uh, if we start with the bulk reconstruction, we have some integral. We ha we have to smearing over the boundary. But if we take ADS radius to be very large, this 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 integral this smearing x picks up a saddle point. So this figure shows how things going on. Is that uh, we have a, the whole plan of parameters. But if we take the ADS radius to be very large, we actually pick up the, the, the saddle points. And if we consider massive case, because the massive case, the mass means that the delta fun, uh, the, the, the conformal dimension is also very large. So we kind of uh, pick up additional saddle points here. So that's why we have a different formula for massive case and massless case. So Actually, if we pick up the saddle points, we just have a kinematic saddle points. That is the the time the Lorenz, the Lorenzian time um, is focused onto a formula in terms of a flat space momentum. So this is the only constraint for the coordinate for the embedding coordinate. And what what is conjectured in this paper in this work is just one choice for this saddle points, which is actually not very natural for massless case. And for massive case, we can actually have more large parameters, like the, uh, that is the conformal dimension, so that we actually can pick up one more saddle point. So now we have a natural unified framework for Manning space. Uh, this is our framework. Uh, this is our formula. This T is a, a flat space amplitude, and this M is a Manning amplitude. So th th this case, if we take the mass, if we consider massless case, we just take the M to be zero. And, but if we consider massive case, not only we keep M here, but also we have to take delta here, which is conformal dimension to be very large. And so that in this case, we have to pick additional saddle point for integral over alpha. And that's why uh, the, the, the massive case doesn't have an integral at all. And this formula can be straightforwardly converted to other frameworks. And but it's pretty long trivial. It's that we actually we can derive the massive phase shift formula for long identical particles, which is just a conjecture before. Let me I'll remind you. It's this formula. That's pretty long trivial. And then if we use the region duality, um, we can actually derive the notion called the momentum coordinate duality. Because, I mean, subregion duality kind of relates the Ponkel ADS reconstruction and, uh, and the global ADS reconstruction. In this case, we actually collect the Ponkel, we actually collect the momentum space flat space limit and magnet space flat space limit. So this is how we construct this thing that connects the point Q and global a uh, flat space limit. So the, the trick is the same, is that uh, if we look at this 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 um, formula, the Fourier factor is actually dominated by some saddle points in the range of time. So yeah, um, I hope I'm uh, it's uh, in time because I just, just have half hour. So just summary, in the usual kinematics, there are different frameworks for the flat space limit of ADSMT. Some actually remains as conjecture. We explain the origin and provide 
and provide the unifications for those frameworks with technical derivation. There's still some outlooks like, uh, how about this flash, the, the, the analytic properties, like uh, we have analytic properties of safety coordinators, like some rash behavior and some, uh, some uh, uh, shadow representation, um, double discontinuity and so on. Um, and how, and we also have analytic properties of flat space limit, like frost agreeable formula and, and cutting rules and so on, and how to relate them in the flat space limit. There's some works going on and some works already uh, posted out, but it's, uh, I'm sure there are so many things to be understood. Um, also, uh, the, the, this work we actually focused on the scanner case, how about how about the spinning external particles? It's also, uh, it's pretty interesting to understand. And thanks. So, sorry, I actually moved pretty fast because I wasted a lot of time. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for giving this nice talk. Um,